Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. So in this video, we'll discuss the last problem of lead code by weekly contest 106. It's a hard level problem, but again, the accuracy is much better than the other questions that you have in the same contest, right? So let's see what this problem is asking us to do. But again, on the easier side as compared to the other problems, right? So the problem name is find a good subset of the matrix. So you are given a zero index M cross N binary matrix, right? It's a binary matrix contains only zero and one. Now let us call a non-empty subset of rows good if the sum of each column of the subset is at most half of the length of the subset, okay? More formally, if the length of the chosen subset of rows is k, that means we have chosen k rows, then the sum of each column should be at most floor of k by 2, okay? Return an integer array that contains row indices of a good subset sorted in ascending order. If there are multiple good subsets, you can return any of them. If there are no good subsets, return an empty array. A subset of rows of the grid uh, is any matrix that can be obtained by deleting some, possibly none or, no, none or all rows from the grid. Okay. What does it say? You are given an M cross N matrix. Okay. Now the matrix will have some rows, right? Some rows and some columns. You can see that here as well. These are the maximum number of rows you can have and these are the columns you can have. Just see the number of columns is very less and this will help us in solving the problem, right? Constraints are very useful. It also helps you in, you know, finding the algorithm which you can use to solve the problem, right? So these are the rows that you have. These are the columns. The number of columns are very less. Okay. So it says that a non-empty subset of rows is good. If you choose some rows, suppose you choose this row and this row, okay? So if you choose two rows, suppose you have chosen two rows, so you will also basically will be selecting their columns, right? Now for every column, you have chosen two rows, right? For every column, just see what is the sum of values in the column, right? For example, maybe here we have zero, here you have one and so on, right? Zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, something like this, okay? So just see, now for every column, for this column, the sum is one, this column sum is one, this column sum is zero, this column sum is two. So it says that it is good if sum of column of the set that you have chosen is less than equals to this number of rows divided by two here two by two getting it sum of each column should be at most floor of k by two let's see this example a concrete example will be very helpful to understand so what we have to do we have to choose some rows which are basically forming a good subset and return the indices of that right here it is 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay. Just see. Suppose I choose only this. Okay. That means I've chosen one row. Getting it. Now, one row will always be good if all the values are 0 there. Why? Because if you have chosen 0, 1, 1, 0, sum of this column is 0, sum of this column is 1. Now, 1 is not less than equals to floor of number of rows that is 1 divided by 2 getting it this condition is not true similarly for this and okay this satisfies so that means a single row is not satisfying your condition okay let's select multiple rows remember the rows that you select need not be consecutive you can choose any subset suppose i choose 0 1 1 0 and then 0 0 0 1 two rows you have selected sum of each column should be less than equals to 2 by 2 that means it can at most be 1 sum of this column is 0, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, okay? That means at most, you, you know, every column has at most a value of 1. It satisfies your condition. That means, okay, yes, you can return these two rows because these two rows are forming a good subset, okay? So you return 0 and 1, okay? Similarly, let's take the other example. So you have just a 0. If you choose this, what happens? You can... You, you only have this option, right? If you choose this sum of column is zero and it should be less than equals to one by two. Okay, you are able to satisfy this condition. What about this one, 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 one. Now just see here, the number of rows that you select here is two. If you select one row, obviously it will not be satisfied. If you select both the rows, it is two. Now every value is one here, right? Now for every column, the value should be less than or equals to the number of rows you have selected by two so the condition fails here that's why you return an empty you know empty set right so that's the problem statement also in the first one if you choose the last you know this one so it will be of no use rather it will be uh, you know uh, deviating your set from being a good set why suppose all the values are one right what it is doing 
it is contributing look there are two things sum of column and number of rows okay i want this guy to be at least two times greater than sum of each column right now if you are including a column where you have a value one so what is happening sum is increasing by one row count is also increasing by one okay that means it's not something going in your favor this guy should increase by two times of what this is increasing that means adding rows with values one is something we should try to avoid right that's the crux that's then observation that you should go suppose there is a row with zero 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 what does it mean i can just pick up this row and my condition will be satisfied because i pick just one row all the column values are zero why should i pick any other row right i do not need it i can return any set which is good so in this case this is a good set right so what i mean to say if you keep on observing if you see some examples then you then you will see that either you just have to select one row or you have to select at max two rows okay you can select more because suppose let's take an example suppose you select three rows okay suppose you select three rows what happens some values will be let me draw a matrix like this okay so let me draw a matrix like this suppose you choose three rows that means the number of rows is three okay and the sum of each column should be less than equals to three by two that means it should at most be one that means sum of this should be one this should be one this should be one this should be one right now what i mean to say is what i mean to say if three columns is giving you if it's satisfying your condition then obviously if you remove one row sorry sorry if three rows is satisfying your condition then obviously if you remove one row your condition will be satisfied right because because sum of this this three is one these three cells is one right because of this sum of these three cells is one sum of these three cells is one and, and so on right if you select any two of them right any two of them if if addition of three numbers is one obviously addition of two numbers out of those three numbers will also be one getting it meaning if n rows is satisfying your condition then you can check that less than n rows are they satisfying your condition meaning if all the values are zero then it satisfies your condition you return true that okay only one row selection is giving me the result or at most what you can do you can choose two rows okay you can choose two rows let's see that in worst case what will happen you'll have a configuration like this zero 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 you'll return true or in worst case what will happen you'll be choosing a row with one 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 if you choose one 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 this is failing right if you choose two rows like this this is one row this is two row okay some values are zero some are one getting it something like this so you'll see here that every column should have a sum of every column should have a sum of one because i have two rows right now if more number of rows is satisfying your condition true rows will also satisfy your condition getting it just write some examples and you'll 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 get to know that why because again i told you because if you add a row and a value one is present at a particular cell then the sum is also increasing by one the number of rows is also increasing by one however it should not happen this should increase roughly two times right but uh, that's why I try to choose minimum number of rows because the more number of rows I choose, higher are the chances that my values will be one, right? In worst case, I'm talking about the best case is all the values are zero. You return that single row, right? So that's what I've done here. Now, the second thing I told you the constraints are low. The number of uh, columns is very low, five. Okay. So what happens here is number of rows is high, number of columns is less, right? So suppose I have a value. In worst case, I'll have five columns. Suppose one zero one zero one something like this. So what I can do, I can convert it into an integer, right? I can convert it into an integer. It will be uh, one two three four five five bits. These five bits, I can convert into an in integer. So how many numbers do I have here? I'll be ha having at most thirty two numbers, right? Because for five bits, two. 2 2 2 2 2 raised to 5 that means 32 numbers so that means whatever irrespective of how many number of rows you have those rows will generate at most 32 values right at most 32 values because what are the values of 5 bits starts from 0 0 0 0 0 goes till 1 1 1 1 right simple binary right like for 3 it is 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 and so on right so 0 to 31 
is your range. So what you do, you convert all the rows into these values. And now, now what I'll do, I've already seen my answer can be either a single row or a number of, or a couple of rows, right? So just see if two numbers are there, like, I mean, if you have generated a number X and a number Y, okay, I, I can have 32 possibilities. Just see if you have generated a number X and a number Y, if and of these two is equals to zero, if and of these two is equals to zero, why? and of these two is equals to zero that means a particular bit is set either in one of them or none of them right it is not set in both of them like one zero one zero one zero one zero one zero something like this right so just see at every position at most one bit is set so if i choose rows like this right i can choose at most two rows right that's the best case uh, like after a single row so just see if you choose choose these two rows, what happens? One zero one zero one and zero one zero one zero. Here you will see if at a particular bit position the and is one. That means in both the rows I have one. Now if in both the rows I have one, what happens? The sum of this column becomes two, and it is not less than equals to two by two. Getting it? So that is why that is why this is a trick which I can use to generate the numbers, and that's what I'll do. As soon as I find it, I return my answer. Let's see the code to get more clarity. This is the number of rows I have, number of columns I have. I've taken an answer array and I've taken a map. Why, why have I taken a map? I've taken a map because suppose uh, multiple rows have the same configuration, like for example, one, one, zero, one, zero. Suppose five rows have this configuration. So what I'll do, whatever is the value of this. Now, what will be the value of this? Just see here, one, two, four, eight, 16. These are the positions, right? So 16 plus eight, that is 24, 24 plus 2, 26. This is 26, right? So whichever row uh, generates a value 26, I'll add that into the list. So 26 and the uh, indices of the rows which are generating this value, okay? I'll do that. So here I'm generating the values, right? For all the rows, for all the columns, if that is equal to one, just add the, right? Now, as soon as, if for a particular row, all the values are zero, then obviously the generated value will also be zero. So you just add that in your, into your list and return the answer because I've already told you if there is a row like this, your answer is just this row, right? Because sum of every column is zero. That is less than equals to one by two. Simple. Or else what you will do? Fetch the list for that, for the generated value and add the current index, add the current row index into that, right? Till here, I've just generated the map. Simple. Here is my core logic. Traverse all the possible values values goes from 0 to 31 but obviously if it would have been a 0 i would have returned it from here so from 1 to 32 j goes from 1 plus 1 to 32 if i and j equals to 0 that means if the same column in two rows is not one if both of them is not set and if you contain this value in your map right if there is a row which generated this value i and there is a row which generated this value j right this i and this j then that means okay my condition is satisfied so let's pick up a random row from it okay so answer dot add map dot get get a value right get the value so by default you'll getting the smallest value because we are you know uh, traversing the rare, uh, rows in order right we are traversing the rows in order so from i and j pick up uh, one row each and just sort it obviously just two values are there you sort it and you return your answer in case you are not able to find a pair like this you finally return an empty list right that's what the question is asking me to do right simple let me reiterate the the simplest thing here is this constraint right you convert every row into a value keep up keep a map of that okay this value is uh, generated by these many rows okay keep a list of those rows and if i and j that means if two rows do not have uh you know uh one in the same column then that will give give you zero i and j will be zero simple stuff and if both the values are generated by e even a single row okay your condition is satisfied you return this right that's the main logic also the main observation here is one one row or two rows is your answer right you can take more rows as well but actually that's what i said if five rows is, is giving you answer less than five rows will also give you the answer because more number of rows you add you have a chance of adding a column with a value one okay that's why so yeah that's it for the solution uh, this was a very different problem i would say because again seeing that okay only one or two rows could be your answer 
so this was something different i hope you learned something new from this video uh, do let me know in case you have any queries also if you find this value video helpful uh, then just support it by giving up a thumbs up also do subscribe to the channel uh, i'll i'll see you in the next video take care bye bye